Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we will learn about errors and error recovery with respect to the lexical analysis phase. Coming to the outcome of today's session, first we will observe the role of error handler, especially for the lexical analysis phase. Next up, we will discuss about the various types of errors. Since we have been studying about the lexical analysis phase, so after the types of errors, we will observe different types of lexical errors. Finally, we will learn how error recovery is done in lexical analysis. Now in the previous sessions, while studying about the compiler's internal architecture, we learned, along with the six phases of the compiler, it has got two more components, that is, the symbol table manager and the error handler. Now we have already learned about the symbol table and also have solved some problems pertaining to that. Today, we will mainly focus on the error handler. To be precise, we will observe how the error handler works specifically for the lexical analysis phase. Coming to error handler, it mainly does three things. First, error detection. Then, error reporting, that is generating error reports to the user. And finally, error recovery, that is, implementation of some recovery strategy for handling the errors. Now let's observe various types of errors. Errors can broadly be classified into two categories, compile time errors and runtime errors. Runtime errors take place during the execution of the program code. Insufficient available memory space, unexpected errors, etc. are the examples of runtime errors. Coming to compile time errors, these occur during the compile time, that is, before the execution of the program. Compile time errors are of three types, lexical, syntax, and semantic errors. From the names themselves, it is pretty obvious that lexical errors are the ones that occur during the lexical analysis phase. Evidently, syntax and semantic errors occur during the syntax and semantic analysis phase, respectively. Today, we will discuss about the lexical errors. Let's now observe the lexical errors one by one. Having an identifier name with too many symbols is actually considered as a lexical error. However, in our previous sessions, the finite state machine of the identifier that we observed permits identifiers to have as long name as possible. Observe. From the initial state, in order to reach the final state and to be recognized as an identifier token, the legend must have at least either a lowercase alphabet or an uppercase alphabet or at least one underscore. Now, this self loop on the final state gives us the flexibility of having any number of symbols, be that any alphabet in any case, be that an underscore or any decimal digit. This is the logical representation. Nonetheless, Implementation-wise, there is a restriction on this. Honestly, FSMs can either recognize or reject any string of any length. Think about it practically. Do we really need the identifiers to be that long? Moreover, there are six phases in the compiler. If only pattern matching in the lexical analysis takes indefinite amount of time, will that be efficient? No, right? So during the practical implementation of the FSM, Different programming languages set different rules. Like for C, although American National Standards Institute, that is ANSI, allows six significant characters for the external identifiers' names. Well, external identifiers are actually the identifiers which are used in macros. Anyway, ANSI allows 31 significant characters for internal identifiers which are basically declared in a function block. On the other hand, Microsoft C compilers allow internal identifiers to have up to 247 significant characters. For C++, both Intel and Microsoft compilers allow up to 2048 significant characters for the identifiers. Then again, in Python, identifiers are allowed to have 79 significant characters. Now, exceeding length of numeric constants is also considered as lexical error. For an instance, consider this statement. Here, the variable i has been specified with the int that is integer data type and it's been initialized with this value. It's an error. Why? 
Suppose the platform we are writing this code for allows int type variables to allocate two bytes of space in the memory. Well, in that case, the variable i will be allowed to have any value within this range. That is, i may be assigned with any value from minus 32768 to 32767. Coming to the next one, numeric constants which are ill formed are considered as lexical error. Consider this statement. This one is considered as a lexical error specifically due to this dollar sign in between. This one is an ill-formed numeric constant. Thereafter, if our program code includes illegal characters that are absent from the source code itself, that too is considered as lexical error. Consider this particular statement. This is considered as an error. To be precise, it is a lexical error. Why? Due to this dollar symbol at the end of the statement. Basically, this is a C language statement. And in C, we don't have this dollar sign. So this makes it a lexical error. So these all are different types of lexical errors. Now let's move on to the next phase. Now we will observe the lexical error recovery, that is how errors are dealt with by the error handler, especially during the lexical analysis phase. There are quite a few strategies. The first one is the panic mode recovery. This is the most basic way of error recovery. In this, once an error has been encountered, successive characters are skipped until valid delimiter is found. For an instance, consider this statement. Here, int is the keyword token. Now, this one is supposed to be an identifier. However, identifiers can't begin with digits. So, starting from the digit 4, the rest, that is N, E, S, and O, all these characters will be skipped until the delimited token, that is this semicolon, is encountered. Now for blocks, it will be a little different. Consider this while block. Suppose there is an error in this particular code segment. In that case, all the successive codes will be skipped till the right curly brace has been encountered. Because in case of this block, this is the delimiter. Now since we are ignoring everything till the delimiters, that's why it is called panic mode recovery. Coming to the next one, error handler can also recover lexical errors by transposing two adjacent characters. For an instance, consider this code segment. If observed carefully, we can observe these two characters are in wrong positions. That means, if the character i was in o's place and if o was in i's, it would have been the valid keyword token union. In this case, the error handler will transpose these two adjacent characters and form the correct keyword token union. So this is another type of lexical error recovery. The error handler can also insert a missing character. As in this case, observe, it is clear that this portion of the statement is missing a character. In such cases, the error can be recovered by inserting a missing character. Like in this particular case, the error handler will insert the character n in between i and t, making it the data type that is keyword token int. Well, error handler can also recover error deleting either an unknown or extra character. Consider this statement. Clearly, at the end of this int, this t is extra. Here, the handler will resolve the error by omitting the extra t. Finally, during lexical analysis, the error handler can perform recovery by replacing one character with another. Like in this statement, the t in between i and t is wrongly typed in. Here, the error handler will replace it by the character n, making it the keyword token int. So these are various types of error recovery strategy implemented by the error handler during the lexical analysis phase. So in this session, first we observed the role of error handler during the lexical analysis phase. Then we learned about the various types of errors. Thereafter, we observed different types of lexical errors. And finally, we noted down various error recovery measures taken by the error handler during the lexical analysis phase. Alright people, that will be all for this session. With this, we have come to the end of our first chapter. From the next session onwards, we will discuss about the syntax analysis phase.
So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.